All right, here we go. So I'm back at my little experiment that I was running. Uh, we're still playing around with the um, Dremel that is chucked into a permanent magnet, north-south, in an iron core, and the box gray looking thing surrounding the core is just a coil of wire. It's from a washing machine pump, a uh, dishwasher, clothing washer, I'm not sure which one anyway, it's appliance crap. Uh, the Dremel is being powered off of the house power. I went with this brown extension cord because I wanted to make sure I was separate from the house ground, uh, which still were tied into the breaker panel, but once my new DC uh, little motor shows up in the mail, I'll be able to do it with a uh, yeah, direct current motor separate from the house power just make sure I'm not getting any uh, something popping up from that. So it'll just help me eliminate some other variables. Uh, we're going through the homemade spark, uh, spark gap spark apps has a brush that just touches the axle of the permanent magnet from the pump motor again chucked into the Dremel. So that is the only um, this whole circuit you see over here this high voltage step up transformer uh, going through the spark gap uh, that's its only relationship uh, with the Dremel is through that brush uh, well and again I apologize too I guess the uh, dishwasher pump is acting like a generator nothing exciting there and the two legs are going into the uh, step up transformer so it comes out around 150 160 and gets stepped up to 2000 plus something like that these acts really aren't terribly important the part that I'm just observing here is just an interesting phenomenon maybe somebody can explain it to me but I have one leg of the transformer, step up high voltage transformer, uh, in this white alligator clip um, tied into a toroid, which I have a bifiler wound, fairly thick gauge wire around a toroid, bifilar, and I'll tell you why in a moment. One of those windings spins around the toroid and then uh, I don't know how many times I just filled it up and the uh, comes out the other end on a black alligator clip to this power cord and I'm using the ground from that we follow it around it comes out to And then you can see the little ground here from another power cord I just cut. I just have a clean, quick connection. I use it a lot for my experimenting. Uh, so what's going to happen here is I'm going to fire up the Dremel. And nothing exciting. It's going to turn this magnet. It's a simple freaking generator. Um, and that juice... I'm going to let bleed off into this high voltage step up transformer. <laughs> Nothing exciting there. Uh, the exciting part is, is I'm not putting a direct load onto this transformer. Um, I'm just using one side of it to run through this spark gap. And when it jumps the gap, it uh, reaches this axle to the magnet which is again chucked into the Dremel and that's it uh, the other side runs through that toroid again going out the ground and then the other two or the other winding on this bifilar uh, toroid uh, the blue wires um, I'm uh, collecting the uh, excited movement, I guess, of electrons, I don't know, uh, into this uh, full wave rejectifier. 
and collecting it into a 2.7 farad cap. I think I think it's 2.7 farad. Uh, I don't know. It takes a lot to charge it though. It's not some quick release piece of junk. You know, I can run a tiny DC motor on this for a little while once it's charged up. So I got the meter hooked up to it. You can see the red is positive coming off the cap. Black negative. Running over to my meter, and you can see the cap right there. 1.95 or 195.8 millivolts. Not much power. But the fact that I'm collecting a charge off one side of the high voltage transformer at all that is simply just stabbed into the dirt out there fascinates me. The other part that fascinates me is that when I let the spark gap jump through then to a brush of an axle of the Dremel and it greatly increases the RPM, which you'll hear in a moment, I'll give you an example, um, is another fascinating thing to me. So two things are happening here. One, I'm able to collect a charge, minuscule, yes, uh, but still interesting. You can see the cap dropping there a little bit. Of course, nothing's running, so it's going to. Um, yeah, I can collect a charge as well, too. While collecting the charge, have just a stupid RPM gain. So, confused as hell. So now I'll demo, and let's check it out. Here we go. So I'm gonna open up the gap so that uh, the spark gap is not involved right now so you can hear the RPM jump. Firing up the Dremel right now, it's going to be loud so I'll, hopefully you can hear. Alright, nothing exciting there. You see my uh, meter isn't doing anything because there's no activity running through the high voltage out to the ground. Uh, now when, ooh, I got a nip there. Now when I um, close the gap and let it jump, you hear it kick up big time. Look at that, incredible. Now we come down to the meter. <coughs> and there we go. I'm collecting my little bit of crappy charge. Anything though right now, to me is incredible. Look at that. And how I adjust my spark gap up top here determines my strength and charge too. But I need to find an even balance where I can keep that RPM wicked high. And uh, the charge. Useful. A useful charge. You can see my meter lit up there and let me know it's got juice coming to it. Uh, fascinating. I'd love to know more why as to how this is doing this. Turn everything off here. Uh, again, I mentioned in the beginning of the video that I want to put a little DC motor here so I can hook it up to, you know, a nice uh, a 12 volt battery. Um, and then measure, draw, and all that stuff. Get a better idea of exactly what's going on. So I want to post this and have some intelligent minds tell me what they know as to be going on if anyone does. Thank you.